Welcome, my name is Taylor Anderson. I'm one of the NX product managers and I'm excited to talk to you today about NX feature templates. Uh, this is a, a new topic and new thing that we're bringing to you here in the upcoming release of NX. And uh, we've been, been talking about this and teasing this a little bit for, <laughs> for the last couple of years and excited to, uh, to finally have it ready for you here. So, so let's dive in and talk about this. Uh, we'll talk about some of these points here as we go through. Uh, starting off with a little discussion of how we're thinking about reusability and, and our direction here. And, uh, and then we'll get into some of the details of what we've done and, and how it's going to be useful to you. Uh, with that, let's jump in and, and talk about this for just a second. <laughs> some of you may have seen this before. This is a, a kind of a fun story. This is a full page, uh, newspaper advertisement from 1991 from Radio Shack. For those of you who grew up in the, the 70s and 80s and, and, uh, maybe early 90s. You may remember Radio Shack as, as one of the premier electronic stores of the time. But uh, lots of things on this ad here that uh, were individual devices And back in 1991. You see radios, and clock radios, and calculators and things up there. And, of course, telephones and, and music players, CD players, and uh, things like that. Um, lots of things on here that uh, nowadays, I think, kind of everything, arguably everything, except for the 15-inch woofer speakers in the lower left corner there, um, camcorder and the computer, really, and phones, of course, answering machines, it really kind of are all part of the, you know, seven-ounce chunk of, of uh, glass and metal and plastic that we, we have in our pockets these days. <laughs> um, add on the left in 1991 dollars, you would have spent just over three thousand dollars to to buy everything on the page there. Um, that uh, that of course you can do with your phone today. Um, roughly equivalent to about sixty three hundred dollars in in 2022 dollars there, which is uh, kind of interesting. Um, to to bring this uh, bring this back to the presentation here, historically NX has had a lot of different technologies for packaging and reusing uh, NX model content uh, between things like user defined features and reuse objects and uh, part families and deformable components and uh, product templates and knowledge enabled parts and and a few more <laughs> that are out there. And uh, one of my missions in life these days as, as one of the NX product managers is to help consolidate and unify these different techniques for capturing and reusing model content in NX. Uh, some of these tools package parts or assemblies for reuse. Uh, some of these capture parts of parts, <laughs> right? Subpart collections of things like features and so forth. But, but you're going to see us moving forward toward a unified approach here. And we think you're really going to like it. Uh, a significant step in that direction is this new concept of, of feature templates. And so, so first, uh, let's take a little look at where we're coming from here. Okay. So user defined features. Um, these, of course, have been around classic, um, MCAD modeling tool. It's been around for over 25 years here with, uh, with Unigraphics in the past and now NX. These are a mission critical thing we know for many of our customers and a staple tool out there for, for modeling technique uh, standardization and commonization. Um, there's, there's no way for us to accurately count how many of these are out there globally, but, but from the customers we know well, we're aware of many, many thousands of these out there in use amongst our customers in the world. Um, used millions of times over the years. <laughs> and uh, so with all of that said, we, we've still had customers, of course, ask for more enhancements over the years. We recognize that UDFs have been getting somewhat long in the tooth here. And, and so a couple of years ago, we embarked on a project to modernize this area based on the work we've done in recent years with product templates and uh, with a tool called Product Template Studio. Many of you have asked us to do this specifically, <laughs> those of you who are familiar with and using product templates. And, uh, and it was a great opportunity to open the door here to some really new, exciting capabilities for, uh, for the user defined feature kind of, kind of object here. So, so with that, let's, let's dive in a little bit to what these are and how they work. Okay. These are a new tool here. They're coming new in this release here, this coming release of NX this summer. Um, they are a key new tool here for us, and in, in, uh, as this uh, describes in accelerating product designs out there through this efficient codeless knowledge reuse of NX objects within a part, not just modeling features uh, anymore. UDFs were very centric on modeling features. We're going to start to include other objects inside NX parts as part of these packages, including things like PMI, product manufacturing information and requirement checks and more. 
So that's exciting. These uh, these are planned to be a successor technology for uh, for mission critical user defined features out there. Um, I'll talk more about the specific changes to product templates uh, in a little bit here. But in a nutshell, we've rewritten the template infrastructure within NX here to use very fast internal objects for storing the, the template UI description and, and well over 90% of the code for um, and the user interface for, for creating product templates and feature templates is now common, which is really exciting. Um, we're excited about extending product templates down into the kind of the subpart feature PMI requirements space. Um, this capability is looking really, really good, and, and we think you'll be really excited about the new possibilities here. So um, really, really exciting ability here for broader content coverage out there that's going to give us um, a much richer uh, functionality capability and, and documentation, of course. Um, deeper codeless configurability here that's going to really jumpstart reusability. Um, we're going to be able to dial in the dialogues uh, for these kind of objects to, to arrange them just how you want and label them just how you want so that they're they're most efficient for your users that are going to consume these, these uh, feature templates downstream. And they're also we've also made it a lot easier to to support these in the reuse library. We've done away, of course, with the classic UDF library, and uh, the reuse library is the native way to uh, to take care of these, which is exciting. Um, very portable as well. You'll see some things we've done there relative to portability, so these are easy to share now. Um, as you might expect, this has been a really cool project with great cooperation amongst the developers from the modeling team and the PMI team and the validation team and the reuse library team and the expressions and design logic team. And, uh, and that's been awesome to be a part of. So the big question here is what can I do now, right? That I couldn't before. <laughs> so let's take a look at that and then and let's dive into some demonstration of this live here and, and, uh, and see this in action. Um, Feature templates, as you can see here, are going to add some new things. Uh, we've talked a lot about the content coverage and uh, the fact that we're moving beyond just uh, modeling features into things like PMI and requirement checks and uh, also other non-associative geometry. If you've got points, collections of points or curves that you want to, to collect up and reuse, this will be an easy way to do that as well. There's some other interesting content on the way here as well. There, there are some uh, some other things inside parts that uh, that we'll be exposing here in, in future releases as well. Um, the end user experience here, as it says, is going to be a lot more consistent with modern NX UI. You'll notice on the dialog examples on the right, and we'll, we'll see both of these here live in just a minute, and, and we'll build the one on the far right uh, live in just a minute. But uh, in particular, the geometry selection there you can see is using normal NX block uh, widgets, selection widgets. Um, User-defined feature for a long time has had kind of a unique uh, little rectangle block for for uh, geometry resolution that was that was kind of unique to UDFs, and and so we wanted to move away from that to uh, to common uh, standard NX selection widgets. They're going to be more more familiar. To, uh, to modeling users out there. Um, we've got, uh, again, lots of ability now to organize the complexity of more, more complex um, UDFs, essentially, more complex feature templates here. Uh, we've got the ability to use folders and tabs very, very freely to, uh, to, to organize collections of inputs that, that make sense together. Uh, we can have multiple images in there and in, in the dialogue, again, either inside collapsible groups or inside tabs. Uh, to to help illustrate the the key collections of inputs that uh, that you may need for for more complex uh, collections of objects here. Um, also, visibility controls. We've got the ability now to show and hide various things in the UI as as uh, options maybe are turned on or off in inside a, a feature template here. Again, very very analogous to the kinds of things that we've been doing in product templates for the last several years. Um, this embedded images and help documentation bullet is an interesting one. As, as we build both product templates and feature templates, of course, the, the, the objective is, is reuse. And so we're going to be taking these and, and adding these to a variety of, of new models and destination models and destination assemblies out there. And, and as we do that, we want to make sure that they're portable. That, that as they get moved around, whether you're running uh, NX in the context of Team Center in managed mode, or whether you're running uh, NX directly uh, using the operating system, 
we want those those models to be able to move around and retain all of the 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 the, the goodness in the dialogues in particular if there are images we want to make sure those images are portable if there are help documentation and things like that for a, a custom uh, feature template that we want that help documentation to remain accessible there uh, there are of course techniques with team center to refer to those kind of things images and, and documentation and so forth in the database and that's that's a very good way to do it if you're always running in managed mode but uh, if you want more portability there to be able to send a feature template to a supplier for instance or to uh, send a, a product template to uh, to, to an, an oem partner for instance then uh, we have the ability to embed now images and help documentation and other files, uh, Excel spreadsheets and things like that inside the part file itself. Again, helping to make these packages really, really portable now, which is great. Um, uh, guided support here, yeah, for storing in the reuse library. Again, feature templates, this is going to be the native way we'll, we'll recommend to deploy these and, and we'll see that here in action as well. And again, there's more coming, <laughs> right? So, good. Uh, with that, let's uh, jump in and uh, and do some live demonstration. Okay, um, lots of good stuff here, and uh, th there's some specifics uh, of things that you, you, you can watch for uh, when you do this. But let me switch over to NX here, and uh, and let's dive in. Um, I think every feature template or, or UDF demo needs to start with something like a boss, <laughs> and so just just out of tradition. And so let's do that. This particular one is a kind of plastic clamshell. This has got a, a little lip around the edge here, of course, that we're, we're working with. And I'm going to put some standoff bosses in here that might be the kind of thing that might support a, a printed circuit board inside this, this unit here, for instance. So I'm going to turn on some coordinate systems here at the end of this part that are going to be uh, our locations for where we want these bosses to be out there. And, uh, and with that, let's go and grab some. And we're going to go to our reuse library over here. And uh, as we go to that tab, I've got a, a folder down here that my feature templates are living in at the moment. And I've got this PCB standoff in here that I've built. You'll see that that's a feature template object in the reuse library, a new type, of course, in the reuse library there. And, uh, and as we uh, add this to the part, we'll see it launch that dialog for that particular standoff. Um, this this one we can uh, we can right click and insert this. We can double click this to launch it. We can grab it and drag and drop it out into our model. Any of those will will launch it this exact same way. And uh, and this particular one you see has a, a little legend image at the top up here with some some key parameters um, that are described down here below. And uh, we can choose to include the um, PMI here as it's coming in. This is going to bring in some of that PMI. And, uh, and choose the whether we want to join these, unite these to this body or not. Uh, I'm going to leave these as separate bodies for just now for, for fun, because we can. And uh, in this case here, we're going to choose a CSIS for positioning. It's a very, very common technique. You'll see me use this a lot today for positioning user-defined features, and we're going to use that a lot for feature templates here as well. And then we'll also have a, a, a base face down here, of course, for the bottom end of this. So, so the PCB hole is going to be right there at the point. The, the face down here will be the bottom of our of our boss, and so we'll apply that, and that just goes in very quickly like that, right? Um, so we see how that works. So again, our coordinate system there is right at the spot where that's gonna kind of sit down on top on the top of the ribs. Uh, we've got the draft angle in there, of course, on these. Everything's drafted, and uh, and then of course we've got some PMI coming in as well for the the size of these. If we change that, of course, we'll see the uh, the PMI change. Um, we can uh, throw a few more of these in here too. Let's grab, let's grab that one there. We're going to apply here and and uh, throw a couple more in down here on the other end. And you see, of course, these adapting to the uh, to the geometry underlying uh, the uh, the selections here, right? The height of these are are different, and the contour trimmed on the bottom of these is different. So there's our four that uh, that we've put in there. Um, we see those. Uh, each of those has uh, PMI on it. There, of course. Uh, if we come in and, and edit one of these, we can uh, we can do that. We double click these out here, like any NX feature, and and uh, launch that UI to to go and see that. This is editing with rollback right now, so it's it's going back and making that invisible while it while it edits. I kind of like to to edit with uh, parameters instead. Sometimes just edit with rollback. Depending on your 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 settings, one of these may be the default for you, but but editing parameters here will leave the geometry visible. We'll do this again in a minute on a, another case where it, it's a little more important. But 
we can uh, again choose the presentation of, of things inside here. These we may have standard sizes here for the post diameter. We'll make this one really small just for fun. Take, change the shape of this up at the top quite a bit. Um, maybe make those fins wider now, so our fins are wider than our post uh, here, and uh, and maybe increase the draft angle a bunch, <laughs> and we'll uh, we'll see what that does to this particular standoff. So yeah, we've got a smaller post, wider fins now at this point, bigger angles on that, and uh, it's a very different look, but, uh, but that's okay. And of course, our, our PMI here came along for the ride as well, right? We've got our two-degree draft there, four, four uh, millimeter wide uh, posts on there too. So these are, of course, independently editable, and, and as you would expect, and these show up in the uh, uh, the model navigator now as, uh, or part navigator, as individual features, of course, out here, right? These are single features out here. That collection of, of course, several features that, that build each of these. Um, if we want to, we can explode these as well. So for instance, we might grab one of these here and say that I want to explode this guy. And if we do that, that's going to turn it into a feature group. And we'll see the uh, original features then visible underneath there. And we could go into those individually at that point and, and do surgery there if we need to, to, uh, to work on those in, in a more detailed way. Okay. So that's the basic operation of these feature templates. Uh, putting one in, how we're going to use them. We'll see them in the reuse library. And, and again, uh, double click those or drag and drop them to, to bring them out and, and start to launch them into our park. And those, of course, are associative to our inputs there as well, right? So if we have that uh, that coordinate system there that that's based on, uh, if we move that that coordinate system and say make that uh, make that taller here for just for fun, then uh, of course our underlying feature template there will will update to that new position, that new uh, input position as well. Okay. So uh, that's one example. Let me close this one down and let's look at uh, another one that we'll build from scratch. Um, this one, a little simpler destination part in this one. <laughs> this is the uh, the uh, the block. <laughs> and uh, here again, I've got some coordinate systems that are going to be uh, destination points for these these features as we bring them in. We'll go to our reuse library, and this particular one is a little pressure connector here. Uh, this little pressure port right here. This is an external port that's going to going to get attached on the outside of this part in the end. Uh, but it, it's a, the, the opening, of course, to a passage with, that's going to go inside the part. And so there's a hole uh, at, at, the, at the base of this thing that's going to go down into the solid and, and may create some internal passages for, for fluids. Um, geometry is based uh, loosely on, on some, uh, some geometry from a particular customer, uh, though hopefully not too close. <laughs> uh, as we bring this out and, and add this to the part, similarly, this is going to use a, a datum coordinate system for positioning. We'll grab that. There's a target body here because we're going to make a hole in this body and, and a depth for that one. And really all the rest of the dimensions of this are, are standard, right? This really is only that hole depth is the thing that we're going to vary in this particular case. The rest of this will all be held constant out there uh, at a standard size. Um, this one has a requirement check baked into it. Uh, this particular one is looking at the whole depth here. And uh, for instance, if we take that whole depth and make that very large, uh, we may get a uh, an alert here that's showing us, actually this is, yeah, this is uh, warning us right now, right, that uh, that we've got a problem. And, uh, and as we look at that there, it tells us that, for instance, uh, we may want to say that tell the user that drilling holes deeper than 50 millimeters may require special tooling here. And uh, you can start to guide users in their usage of, of a collection of features out here, a feature template, um, using the requirement checks that may be embedded inside the template here as well, right? So really rich ability here to, uh, to, to give feedback to the users here as we do this. Um, in this particular one, let's go ahead and do that. We've uh, we've selected the CSIS and, and the target body, so let's go ahead and say OK. This one's got a bunch of PMI that it's going to bring in, and uh, we can see that that's all all come in nicely there on this particular this particular one. Um, relative to orientations, I wanted to bring in another one of these here and show that uh, that if we uh, orient this one again, the CSIS is our our friend here in terms of orientation, but. Uh, we can bring this in in a, a completely different orientation. And, and again, the, the PMI is going to come in very nicely. And this, of course, has all the behaviors of, you know, being able to flip around and, and give you readable numbers from, from any orientation here, of course. So with that, um, let's take a look at the inside of this part. <laughs> so if we come to the view and let's section this guy, we've got 
Uh, we've got a couple of those. Oh, I made that really long hole there, huh? I made that 80. That's uh, longer than we need it. So here again, I'm going to edit parameters just so I can uh, see this. If I if I edit with rollback here, of course, it's going to roll back to to really before those those both existed. And so uh, just just because I like it the other way, I'm going to do it this way and edit parameters so I can kind of see what's going on here. Um, hole depth is 80 right now. Let's bring that back to like 30 and see what that does. That's close. Maybe a little more. Let's say 35. Yeah, that should be enough for that to intersect right there. And um, so let's do that. And let's bring this guy. And we'll do a similar edit on this one. And uh, see what we need here. How about 40? Yep. 40 looks like that gives us a nice clean intersection down there of those two. Uh, and so with that, you can see kind of that interaction of, of bringing those in, editing those, um, and, uh, and and starting to use those in the context of a design to accomplish what we're trying to do here, right? Here again, we could choose to explode that if we want to and, and so forth. But, um, but again, collection here of not just modeling features, but modeling features, PMI and a requirement check in this case, which is pretty cool. Um, again, several things there that we, we were not able to do with UDF in the past. Um, this particular one, let's go build it from scratch and you can see how that works. Um, I'm going to take these out of this part. Let's delete these and, uh, and let's go create, uh, the new one. Okay. And, uh, and we'll do that. We're actually we've got some lingering PMI here right now. I'm going to go ahead and remove that as well that are retained. And uh, all right, I think we're clean and ready to, to come do this again in just a minute. Um, oh, there's a little bit more. <laughs> Let me grab those. And there's probably another one down here. Yep, right there. Okay, good. All right, so we're clean and ready to roll. Um, with that, let's go find the original. So this part right here is the original geometry here for this this particular one and what we're going to do is author the uh, the feature template in here now okay a couple of ways we can do this we can we can go to the feature template author tool environment uh, this is a, a task environment kind of like the sketcher that we'll go in and work in for a minute and then and then say done when we're done um, we can start going in there if we want to we also uh, kind of a cool thing that they added is the ability to come to the reuse library and say, for instance, I want from right here, I want to create a new feature template right here. And this is going to kind of pre-populate the destination of where this ends up. Right? So when we're done with it, it's going to show up right here in the feature template testing folder. And um, so let's do that. We're going to call it uh, probably a realized live port. Right? So, so that should come in in the end, uh, realize after retaining and before SAE. So it'll come in right down here near the end when we're done. And uh, so let's say new feature template right here. And again, that's going to launch us into the template studio author environment here for uh, for this, this feature template. Okay. So with that, we've got a, a list here on the left of the stuff that's in our feature template, which is kind of empty at the moment, lots of empty folders. But as you can see, we're anticipating catching things like features and expressions and, and so forth that can be in this feature template. We'll start up here with features, right? An easy place to start. And uh, again, we're going to use an offset datum coordinate system to, to be kind of our initial uh, attachment point here. And let's grab kind of all those features that are the, the tail end of that model. Um, let me square that up just for fun. And um, a few things are going to happen here, right? Uh, well, this, of course, is selecting all of our features. Uh, if we want to add the dependent PMI here, we can do that as well, and that's going to collect up all of the PMI that's attached to the the, the uh, feature template geometry here, and bring that along for the ride. Okay. Um, of course, the expressions related to these features will also be brought in to the template and prepared to to copy with the template there, and then um, requirement checks that are associated with those expressions will also be brought in automatically. And so as we do this here, again, as we say, okay, we'll see those five features get populated into the, the feature folder here. We'll see a bunch of expressions come into the expressions folder that are related to those. Uh, the PMI that, that's associated with this will all come in as well. And then we'll see a requirement check come down here at the bottom, right? So we're just selecting those features. We've selected those five and we'll say, okay, and a whole bunch of stuff will get populated over here. 
like that, right? So we see a bunch of features there. Again, there's a bunch of expressions. Uh, one of those has a little green uh, dude hanging off of it, which of course is our requirement check that's saying that our hole is not too deep right now. <laughs> that's good. Um, there's our PMI that's come in and, uh, and our checks, right? So each of those, of course, will highlight for us out there. Uh, we do that check. Of course, it'll highlight our expression up here and, and vice versa, right? And, uh, and then, of course, that expression is related to a feature. And each of these up here is also related to some, some expressions and so forth, right? So, so that kind of interaction, that cross-probing of, of the objects is possible amongst uh, the contents here, of course. And, uh, and of course, is also highlighting things out on the screen there as we uh, as we do that. So so all of that cross probing is all still live, which is really really nice. Um, if there are additional expressions or additional PMI that you want to include, you can add those as well as other other things. We're not going to do that in this case, but um, but again, we just selected those five expressions and and got this far right. Um, the next thing we're going to do here is configure the user interface. This is going to build the dialogue for this this feature template. Um, the UDF wizard in the past, of course, would collect up the, the uh, geometric references that were needed to uh, attach this. In our case, uh, we've got this offset datum coordinate system that's going to need a, a coordinate system. And we've got a hole here that needs a target body that it can make a hole in. <laughs> and, uh, and so we'll see as we go to configure the user interface that the, the modeling team has done an excellent job of collecting up those necessary references and creating for us the set of selection widgets that we need to resolve those, which is pretty pretty cool. Um, we've organized it here by features by default, but we can change this and move these around here as, as much as we want. And so uh, we've got that, that reference CSIS here, that's this guy here that we're gonna, we're gonna do. Right now it just says datum CSIS. If we wanna edit what the label of what shows in the dialogue here, we can say, for instance, this is for positioning, right? And uh, and that'll update our dialog immediately here. We can see that change happen right away. Target here as well. Maybe maybe we'll call that our target body here. And um, and again, update the dialog. Um, I, I don't really need two groups here, so I'm going to take this lower one, the target, and drag it up into the top group right here. I'll grab that and bring it up here, and, and that'll put those together. And, and uh, I've got an empty group here I'm going to get rid of. And um, so, so yeah, that's the beginning of our dialogue here, right? Um, this group here, I think I want to call this parameters instead and uh, spell it right just for fun. There we go. And uh, the dialogue itself right now is called untitled, which is no fun. So let's call that one our realize live port here. And uh, I'm going to copy that name that's on the top of our dialogue and uh, use that name for the file name out there as well, actually, which is going to go in that feature template testing folder that we we use to, to start this whole process, right? So it'll automatically populate that, that template location for us. If we want to change that, we can double click and, and browse in the reuse library and choose a different location for that if we want to. But that's a, that's a good place for it. And uh, so we'll say OK there and come back to our, our studio uh, navigator. Um, Let's see some settings on this. If we want to allow the user to end user to explode it, we can choose to allow that or disallow that. If we enable that, it'll create a settings group in here and, and uh, give us that explode option. Um, similarly, if we want to allow users to choose whether to uh, inherit PMI settings from the original template or from the target part, we can, we can include that option in here. If one or the other of these is turned on, we'll, we'll show that settings group. And if both of them are turned off, then we won't, right? So we've got our geometric references. Those were easy. Uh, let's grab, uh, we've got that expression input for the depth. Let's grab that one, this one. Um, we can, again, add this, right click and add this if we want to. We can double click to add this. We can drag and drop this up here and, and drop it into the list if we want to. And uh, this depth here, let's call this our whole depth, just so we know what we're talking about. Uh, right now, this is uh, set to be a key in value here. We we'll type in a value, but we can make this a list of choices if we want to, or a drag handle, or a, a slider, or spinner, or things like that. For inputs that are uh, expressions that are a one or a zero, or a true false, we can use a checkbox kind of interaction, uh, which is really handy. 
And, uh, and of course, things like read-only text, if there are values we want to feed back to the dialog that are interesting, say, measurements or resultant values that we may use for making decisions, then we can use read-only text to, to feed those back and, and so forth, right? List expressions is a, a really, really dynamic, cool way to do list of choices, but using a list expression to, to populate the values. But uh, in this case, we'll stick with a key in, a really simple one here. We do have the ability to come in and and uh, selectively control the visibility or the sensitivity of of this this widget here, right? The the input we can do that with some of these others as as well as we uh, we we work on those. But um, this this a lot of configuration here that you can do again, making this look and feel exactly how you want to, uh, which is which is exciting. Um, with that, let's uh, we've got those in there. Oh, our requirement check. Let's uh, let's get that little little uh, indicator on there. Uh, we're actually going to use an action button here. Action buttons can do a lot of different things. Uh, we'll double click this one to add it just for fun. Added it at the bottom. Let's let's drag it into our group there. And a uh, bunch of different kinds of buttons we can have. You can, there's a help button. We can we can add uh, some help uh, documents to that if we want to. Again, either in the native file system or embedded in the part. Either one. Um, in this case here, we want to do a, a check information button. So this is going to give us our validation checks out there. And uh, we'll call that validation checks just for fun. And uh, there we go. And uh, so with that, that's kind of our functional stuff in our dialog, right? And with that much, we're able to uh, go out and run that and, and make it happen. Um, if we want to add some images to that, we can certainly do that. And we've got the ability now inside the, the template author environment, again, both for feature templates here and also for product templates, to go and select an image, capture that image as part of this, uh, this environment, which is really slick. So, so for instance, um, let's go do that for a second. <laughs> we have our dialogue. Our dialogue's right here. Let's make, get the model so it's a little bit smaller than the, the width of our dialogue there. And uh, that's a good size. Um, let's let's come out and go to select image here, and we're going to go grab some of that content. Uh, we're going to select a region, and uh, we'll grab say that much of that right there. Um, yeah, we'll bring it up here, maybe like this, uh, a little smaller. We can adjust that width-wise and so forth, and get that right where we want it. And uh, and with that, it's going to save this file uh, right into the part in this case here. So we'll, we'll call this our dialogue image uh, just so we can find that in just a minute. And, uh, and again, it's going to grab that, that save that as a, a different, you know, we can choose what kind of image we want. I kind of like PNGs, so we'll, we'll grab that. And, um, and again, this is going to save this right into the part, right? So as we go and look at the embed manager here, this will show us the, the files that are embedded inside this part. And of course, we see that dialogue image that we just created is, uh, is tucked in there as an image. Right. So what that lets us do then is, is in our user interface here, we can come and say, I want to go grab a, this is going to be a label actually. And, and we're going to drag this up right up there near the top of our, of our part. That's our dialogue. There we go. And, uh, and this is going to be our legend. We'll give it a little kind of mouse over, um, label there just for fun. But, uh, the bitmap's the important part here, right? And we're going to go grab this bitmap from the embedded file system instead of from the operating system. And then as we come to select it here, it'll show us the list of files that are tucked inside this part. And that dialog image is one of those. So we'll grab that and that'll that'll put that right into our dialog. Um, one last thing here we've added is the ability to uh, to center this if you want to. <laughs> Real simple thing, but uh, but people seem to love this. So, so we'll grab centered. And as we do that, of course, this will kind of snap a little more to the center there. And uh, and look nice in the uh, the dialogue. So here's our here's our new feature, right? This is our realized live port, and uh, we've collected up again a, a collection here of of some features. We've done some organization of that out there. Put a button and some uh, image on it, and so forth. Um, expressions that are coming along for the ride, PMI and requirement check that are all in there, and uh, and with all of that in place, now we're gonna finish this, right? Uh, if you want to exit without saving, we can always exit. But we, we like what we've done here, so we're going to finish this. And as we do that, it's going to go and we'll see it add that again in this uh, reuse library, right? Probably right in between this, this retaining and this SAE right here. So it'll pop into this spot right here. Okay. So as we say finish there, that's going to think about it for a minute. 
and uh, and it's going and working on that and it's done it here now and there's our realized live port right there actually came oh yeah yeah I, I can spell it does come in before retaining <laughs> so so yeah so here's our new one right and, uh, and with that we'll come back to our ports uh, destination here and we can grab our new one now this realized live port and as we drag that out there of course we're gonna see that uh, that dialogue that we just created right and we can go grab a CSIS, grab the body, and say OK. And, and that goes in just like we uh, saw before. Um, similarly, grab another one, and, and we'll stick it down here. And, and this, of course, is going to look very familiar as we, as we do that, right? We've got two little short ones in here right now. OK, so that's the process of building those. Really straightforward, right? I think, I think you, uh, you, you, you probably uh, feel like you could, you could do that yourself if you needed to. Um, again, feature template author is the, the new tool there. And, uh, and this is going to let us get in and, and see. Oh, that's the original. Let's go to the one in the reuse library, which will, which will have all the content in it. Um, to edit the stuff that's in the reuse library now, actually super, super easy, right? The existing ones to change that definition of that one. We can go and either open that part and then, and then go edit it. We also can go straight to edit here, which will open the part and launch us into the, the feature template author environment, uh, directly. So we've got uh, the one in the reuse library there right now. And um, if we look at that, uh, what does that look like? Yeah, that's kind of kind of that oblique look at it right now. So let's let's get this centered up here, kind of how we like it. Um, I'm going to finish, come out of the, re the, the template environment here, and let's, let's just save this part again here. And uh, we'll do that and update that, that preview right there. So as we save this part now, it'll... It'll snap that flat. Yeah, kind of like that other one. <laughs> and uh, so with that, yeah, we've, we've uh, created that. We can go in and edit it uh, directly if we want to. And, uh, and then, of course, reuse those out there um, in, our, in our designs. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Um, hope, you'll, hope you'll like uh, working with that. Let me show you one more quick example, and then we'll, uh, we'll move on. Uh, this last one is um, not a boss. <laughs> I intentionally wanted to do one that's a different shape. This one, uh, we got a bunch of cylinders here, and uh, this particular one is is a, a real simple one, but but kind of cool in that it's a uh, snap ring groove uh, out here. So this particular one uh, is this guy, this retaining ring groove that we saw there before. Um, the first feature in this model, uh, in this in this uh, feature template, is actually a measure feature. What this is going to do. Is as we come out here, we're gonna we're gonna select an edge that's at the end of a shaft, and uh, and this is going to look at that edge, and the first feature in the model is gonna measure that edge, and and it's based on the measurement of that edge, it's gonna do some lookups and and go figure out the standard sizes for a groove on a shaft, a retaining ring groove on a shaft of this size, right, and uh, and build not just the the groove itself but also make sure that it's positioned the right distance away from the end of the shaft to, to retain enough material there to, to maintain strength on the end we can choose to include a chamfer on the tip or not and uh, we can see how that works that's actually kind of cool um, but you notice it's it's built that ring on that size shaft right there and if we do the same thing on this smaller shaft we'll we'll get uh, a groove that's the right size for that shaft right and, uh, and another one for this big guy here, for instance, right, that are built to be the, the right size there, okay? The chamfer is kind of an interesting case here. Uh, if we edit this guy, we've got that, that tip chamfer. Here again, I'm going to edit this uh, this way so that we can still see it. Uh, and that's okay. This is, this is saying that our edge is modeled away, which is true, uh, but it's not a big deal. As we as we take off that chamfer there, for instance, we'll notice that that this material is the important material here, right here, right. That the chamfer is kind of past the end of that, so the groove will move down toward the end of the shaft a little bit, if the chamfer is not needed there anymore, right? Which is kind of cool. And uh, we we want to choose to include that chamfer there, then it'll shift back up uh, to accommodate that chamfer. So it's maintaining the strength here. In that feature, that kind of design best practice can be baked right into the uh, the, the object itself here, right? Um, and this, of course, is is designed to fit uh, the the snap ring, right? So we might have our snap ring here, for instance, from our uh, our machinery library, and uh, we bring start to bring those out then, for instance, and snap them into position here on uh, on this on this uh, groove. 
So this one needs a, a distance and an align there. Let's go grab the, the face right there for the distance, and we're going to align it with um, the, uh, the center line here, actually. Uh, this guy, that works. And um, that'll get our snap ring in place. That looks good. And uh, similarly down here, let's grab another one on this small guy. Again, dropping it onto the face here with the, the machinery library, we can inherit the size of that face and use that to automatically select the right one. Um, so let's go grab for the, no, not that face. I want this other one in here. I want the planar face right in here. <laughs> I missed. Let's grab it a little closer. There we go. That's the one I want. All right. And then again, we'll align this with the center axis here, and that's going to uh, bring in our snap ring, right? So we can see there that we're we're getting the feature created. We're getting the right size ring in that, that aligns with the face inside and, and so forth. Um, good. So that's, uh, again, a little different example that's not a boss, right? Here again, we're also using the measure feature in this particular one to, to size the parameter. This one's got some, some uh, list expressions with different sizes that are baked into this one. So we can uh, get the standard sizes here based on the, uh, the standard for this, this particular group. Okay. So a few examples there that we've, uh, we've looked at there. Let's jump back and, uh, and finish off the presentation here. Okay. Um, as you, uh, as you explore these and investigate these yourself, uh, there's some things to watch for <laughs> if you want to. We, we've talked about the content types out there, the reuse library integration, uh, bits there that we can, we can do to, to deploy these a little easier. Um, inside the authoring environment, we, we talked about things like the, uh, yeah, the, the dialogues for selecting content and grabbing the, the features of the model, adding uh, expressions or PMI if we want to. That configure user interface uh, environment again very very similar to product template studio and uh, and that'll be very very familiar to those of you who are already building feature templates or product templates and uh, and and we've we've intentionally made it a non-linear kind of a thing it's not a wizard uh, right like the uh, the UDF wizard was uh, very much by design good uh, so with that Let's uh, let's uh, wrap it up here. So the big question is, uh, how much will I pay to use these guys? Um, the the thing we've done here is because this is going to be a successor technology for UDFs, we're actually going to have this share the exact same licensing as user defined features. Um, so as it says here, and in, in other words, this is a, another example uh, out there of uh, a thing that we're doing uh, to enhance NX significantly and do that at no incremental cost to all of you customers who are uh, either using subscription licenses or, or uh, are current on, on maintenance at this point. So uh, we're, we appreciate your business. <laughs> we want to uh, uh, make sure that we're, we're providing you lots of value for, for those, those subscription and, and maintenance uh, agreements that you have with us. And, and this is an example of that. A bunch of new technology here, a bunch of new functionality, Super exciting going forward that uh, that you have uh, coming as part of that investment at no incremental cost. So that's kind of awesome. Um, these UDF licenses, of course, are included in almost all of our bundles uh, out there, which is which is good. Um, to to the bottom big blue point there, we have no plans at the moment to retire the older user defined features in the short term or even the medium term. <laughs> we we recognize that there's a huge current investment in UDFs out there, and we have have no immediate plans to, to retire UDFs, right? Um, we, of course, will have future development effort. We'll be focused on the future templates uh, going forward. Uh, we will be working on migration capabilities for UDFs. Uh, that's not here in the initial release. Um, the, the UI paradigm here, of course, is, is different enough and that the functional coverage different here is great enough that you, you might find great benefit in rethinking your UDF strategy given the, given the new tools. But, uh, but again, we will be working on migration tools here to, to bring forward uh, current UDFs in some form into uh, to the feature template world, okay? Um, so yeah, high-level points here, of course. This broader content coverage is, is a big, big thing here. Richer functional capability and documentation for these, these guys as we build them. Um, again, bringing in not just modeling features like user-defined features were, but but also things like PMI and requirement checks and, and some other things that you'll see coming soon. Um, very, very deep codeless uh, configurability here for, for dialogue. So we can really dial these in so that they do exactly what you want them to. 
and uh, and then of course super easy to configure these and deploy these in the reuse library as well okay so uh, exciting uh, new capability here. We hope you enjoy it. We know we do. <laughs> and uh, um, thank you for coming. It's great to have you with us and uh, um, happy to uh, field questions. If you have any uh, comments or questions or concerns or complaints or suggestions, we I'm all ears. <laughs> Love to talk about this topic. It's uh, It's been exciting working on it. Again, wonderful group of, of developers uh, across several teams that have, have contributed here. And that's exciting to watch. We uh, we don't get to do what we do without uh, all of you uh, using our products, and so we really appreciate that. And uh, it's exciting to uh, to be able to get back together with many of you at the live events this year, and uh, and looking forward to seeing the rest of you uh, in the near future. Okay, thank you so much, and have a great day. <laughs>